Hello, we're Group 10, and today we're going to present on Tumblr our findings about Netflix movies and shows. Our group consists of Jose Iglesias, Malco Pulgar, me, Valentini Fiolotidou, and Vera Zhu. For our analysis, we're using two datasets, which we first clean by removing duplicates, separated multivariate columns into separate ones, and then join based on the title and rating. During our presentation, we'll be answering six business questions. So now, without further ado, Marco is going to talk about the first question. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Marco over here. As we dive into our study, one of the first questions we had was whether TV shows receive better ratings than movies by users of the platform. We first found the population side for movies and TV shows that receive a score by a user. As we filter our data, we realized that not many of the TV shows and movies in the data set receive a score by the user. As you can see in the user rating distribution, the number of times a score was given to either a TV show or movie, is, or movie was very little. For example, only eight movies or TV shows receive the, the total score of 95. And as you can see, if you scroll down, we can further see how the distribution is in between the movies and the TV shows. Just to give you an idea, the, our total population for movies were after our filter is 19 and for TV shows is 99. However, we were the, determined to uh, find an answer to this question. So as we can see in the next slide, we decided to study the average user rating score that was either given to a movie or a TV show and find a total average for both of them. As we scroll down, we can see in the average user rating score was a total of 83.97. And as we were thinking of different ways to set a minimum standard to see how many movies either pass or, or got the minimum required score, we decided to use the number for 80.97. 632, which as we scroll up, we can see that it's under the user rating score and it explains more about as the average user rating score for movies and TV shows. And that's where we find the 80.632. And in our pie chart is we can see the average user rating score distribution. And what this means is that, that we found the number of movies and TV shows that pass the minimum average user rating score of 80.632. And we found out that 13.65% uh, were movies and 86.35% were TV shows. This leads us to think that TV shows in general receive better rating than movies. This is not a surprise as Netflix has been increasing the number of TV shows in their platform and even making some of their own now. Now I'll pass on to my teammate Jose. So, in this case, I'm going to answer the question about which actor has most rating and what movie did they receive, Danny. Before I start, or that I said, we had all the cast together. All the actors in each movie are together. In that case, we just use the custom uh, split tool from Tabloid, and we just spread all of them with the, all the actors on the movie. In this case, after we split it, we're just gonna take care of the first cast, which is the, the main actor. And you can see here is Adam Sandler who received more of the user rating score. As you can see now, it's 258. I, it's 258 because I used the zoom about all the uh, rating between them. Follow up by Lauren Graham, follow up for Dylan with 99 and, and Dylan Minnette. Here you can see an assembly was right in three different movies. As you can see in this one was Sandy Wexel, The Do-Over and The Waterboy. Laura Graham was right in two movies, which was Gil, uh, Gilmore Girls, A Year in, in the Life, and Gilmore Girls, Just That Name. And the other ones was just right in what movie. That's the reason you, you can see here in this line, the average in them is around 100. Three, sorry, the average is 97 and everything down there, there is because they just have like one rating. The next question is gonna be answered by my teammate. 
Hi, so for our next question, uh, we answer the question, do Netflix users prefer older or newer movies? For this question, we're using the joint data sets since we need attributes from both data sets. First, we observe that our samples are balanced since the number of TV shows is more than three times the number of movies. Then we see, as, Mar as Marco mentioned before, that more TV shows were rated compared to movies. When we take a closer look to the count of ratings per year, we see that for most years we only have one rating per year or even zero ratings. By trying to create trend lines based on the limited data we have, we see both trend lines are not good fits for the model since the combined R square, which is measure of goodness of fit, is too little while the errors are very large. Therefore, we conclude that we cannot determine if the users prefer older or newer t TV shows based on this uh, data set. However, as we can see in the next caption, we can determine the highest rated and the lowest rated shows and movies. It is worth mentioning that the release years mentioned in the graphs are not the actual release years of the show, but they are the years that the show were added to the Netflix platform. So based on the first bar chart, we can see that the highest rated show was 13 Reasons Why, which is a Netflix original created in 2017, while uh, the lowest rated show is Beaten, which was added in Netflix in 2016. Now, Vera is going to talk to you about rating trends. Hello, this is Vera. Uh, we are also curious about the trend in the numbers of R and TVMA rated content in Netflix. So we created three charts to illustrate this question. The bar chart at, a, at the upper left corner shows the total release in different rated groups from 2001 to 2019. The line chart beside it uh, shows the trend of release numbers rated as PG, PG-13, TVPG, and TV-14. And the line graph at the bottom half is the trend in the numbers of R and TVMA rated content from 2001 to 2019. Overall, um, Netflix released more TV shows than movies and more content for teenagers over 13 and adults than those for children. And we don't think that Netflix would make change on their content releasing strategies since they are doing pretty well among the massive online stream market. And in a large chance, Netflix will keep their releasing numbers of R-rated movies at a similar level as what they did in the past few years. Also, as Netflix is, is releasing more originals than the whole TV industry, they have more control of their release than other online streamers, and the numbers of TVMA-rated content would be more volatile than R-rated movies, as it was according to their user feedbacks and the uh, users changing flavors. And our next question will go back to Jose. Well, I'm going to answer now the future TV shows and movies should Netflix focus on adult segments. As the question two, I have to also to split in this, uh, to answer this question about TV shows and movies, but also uh, they have 13, they have by group. And I split that uh, attribute in three different groups. For that reason, uh, my uh, <clears throat> result in that case was creaming TV shows, TV movies, and et cetera, on, as you can see here in the graph. Because before it was like if a TV uh, crime TV show have something else, they will be in that group. We are using just the first uh, listing in number one, which is uh, most of the big category for all the TV shows. Here I show, as Valentini mentioned, also TV shows have been more uh, rating are having more popular on Netflix than the movies. Uh, and in the end, I just show how different is that when you categorize movies as the categorize like children's and family and comedies are really I'm the top one on movies. And you can see the G, G and PG uh, rating is the one who have been like writing more these uh, kind of movies. It's the same with the TV shows. The only difference with the TV shows is the crime TV shows as CSA, as uh, something like detective, uh, it's more popular. But the uh, interesting data you can see here is TV14 and TVMA who 
are like a really young people watching this kind of uh, TV shows. Also, they they are not like all, most of the time watching just TV crimes. Like you can see here, it's followed by TV comedies, it's followed by TV dramas and kids TV. One of the <laughs> conclusion we can get in this graph is everything who have been relating with family and kids gonna be successful in Netflix. If you want to go by a TV show related to family and children, that new product is gonna be good for Netflix. It's gonna have a high rating and people are gonna start watching in that one. As different, if you go for dramas or international shows, which you can see are pretty low in, in the graph in overall. Now I'm gonna give my teammate gonna talk about the limitations. Okay, so the primary limitation we face on this study was that because of the large difference between the numbers of TV shows and movies, some of our analysis of movies would not be as reasonable and convincing as the analysis of TV shows be. But it is how the content in Netflix composed of. Our analysis and the data visualizations still fairly reflect the business issues that we're interested in and would be meaningful and insightful to other further um, relevant research and analysis. Another limitation we had was we noticed that the year release refers to the year release on Netflix. And since many TV shows have several, re uh, have several seasons, the year release may not be very accurate. And then uh, Marco will talk about the recommendations we got from our study. In this study, we were able to get a whole of what could be considered just a speck of those in terms of the amount of data that the Netflix data warehouse pro uh, probably holds. However, we can see that Netflix customers are more likely to enjoy a TV show more than a movie based on our rating findings. And the platform itself has been increasing the number of TV shows over the years. Netflix has a strong uh, possession of TV, MA, and R-rated content. We assume that this can mean that the majority of Netflix customers enjoy content that is usually rated for uh, 13, years old, 13 years old or older. There are really scores for TV shows and movies that are considered for kids based on the film and TV shows rating system made for, to evaluate media for public view are uh, significantly lower than those meant for an older audience as Beta mentioned earlier. This could either mean that there is an untapped market available and a business opportunity for Netflix. If Netflix were to buy a licensing for TV shows and films that have a historical good rating at the moment of release and were to publish it on the platform, better piece of the young audience entertainment market share to use this platform even more. This could mean taking some of the market share from Disney Plus, for instance. However, this lo uh, low rating could also be that the young audience does not necessarily rate the content within the Netflix platform correctly or at all. One, ways, one way to test whether or not Netflix uh, customers truly enjoy mature content more than TV shows or movies made for a younger audience will be to gather licensing rights from movies in which Adam Sandler has participated in. In our findings, we realized that Adam Sandler is one of the most rated actors in the platform. Out of all the movies available in the platform, he happened to be in the movies that received the most rating. Simultaneously, Netflix could also hire Mr. Sandler to be an actor in some of their upcoming Netflix original movies or TV shows. If they were to do this, we could advise to try to get several projects with different audience targets in mind to later on compare how they were received by, their, by your customer base. While this data set we were able to get has many limitations, such as population size, the number of movies that actually got rated by customers, and even some year discrepancies, the process we perform in this, pro in this study can be executed to a well-put data set. We want you to think of our study as the procedures and methods we can apply to your rich data set. If you're interested in our services, uh, please refer to the report that we give you in, through, in paper and you can find our contact information at the bottom. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for giving us this opportunity to talk to you today.